In order to understand why cranial cruciate ligament rupture is the most common orthopedic injury in the dog, we first of all need to look at a comparison between the human and the canine knee. If we look at the human knee, we have the same bones between both species, femur, tibia, kneecap, and inside the knee, the cranial cruciate ligament, and also the cushions of cartilage called the menisci. The big difference, however, is in the human knee, the femur rests on a flat tibial plateau. However, in contrast with the dog knee, there is a slope to this bone of 20 to 30 degrees. Why is this important? Well, in the human knee, when we weight bear, because of this flat surface, weight is transmitted to the level of the knee, then straight up to the hip. In the dog, however, because of the slope effect, when a dog weight bears, all of the force is concentrated at the level of the knee joint. So the femur behaves almost like a ball sliding down a hill, the hill being the slope of the tibia. And it is the cranial cruciate ligament's function to hold on to the femur to actually prevent it sliding down the hill. When we repair cranial cruciate ligament ruptures in the dog, there are two components to the surgery. The first component is actually exploring the knee joint to evaluate the torn cranial cruciate ligament and also and see if there are any meniscal or cartilage tears. There are two menisci in the knee, an inner meniscus and an outer meniscus. By far more commonly, it is the inner meniscus that tears. Why is that? Well, if we actually look at a skyline view of the tibia, and we have lifted the femur off and looked down from a bird's eye view, we can see that the menisci, outer meniscus and inner meniscus, are shaped like boomerangs. The outer meniscus is attached to the femur. So when the knee is unstable and the femur slides backwards, the outer meniscus moves with it. Inner meniscus, however, is attached to the tibia with a ligament. So as the femur slides backwards, it comes over this back portion like a steamroller and many times will tear the back portion of the meniscus. If that is the case, when we go in, we actually remove that back portion. If, however, it is not torn, we cut that little ligament to release the meniscus to get it out of harm's way so that the dog cannot tear the meniscus in the future. Okay. Following exploring the canine knee, the second part of the surgical procedure is to perform a technique that will eliminate all instability in the knee. We believe in the canine knee that the slope is the main predisposing factor. With the technique called tibial plateau leveling osteotomy, one of the most common procedures performed in dogs over 30 to 40 pounds body weight, the idea behind this procedure is to actually get rid of the slope. In order to do that, we make a specialized cut in the tibia below the tibial plateau and then rotate this whole section of bone so that the bone is flat. Once the bone has been rotated and we have achieved a flat tibial plateau, then we need to stabilize the bone in this new position. This is achieved using a special six hole plate with three screws above and three screws below. This plate provides rigid stability until the bone is healed, which is approximately 12 weeks post-surgery. The idea behind this technique is if we eliminate the slope and now we have the femur resting on a flat surface, we have not replaced the CCL. In actual fact, we have eliminated the need for CCL within the knee.